perpendicular to a highway leads to a farmhouse located one mile away from an intersection. A car travels past the farmhouse at a rate of 60 miles per hour. How fast is the distance between the car and the farmhouse changing when the car is three miles past the intersection? This is a classic related rates problem. So this is definitely one to know how to do for an exam. You've got dx dt, and then you wrote down 60 miles per hour. So that's good. Now, in a case like this, I'm gonna almost recommend we have a dynamic triangle and a frozen triangle. The dynamic triangle is gonna be when considering the rates of changes of the sides. So it's definitely a right triangle, just like you've got here. You've got dx dt, 60 miles per hour. So that's this, that's how x is changing in time. Even though it may seem silly, we need to consider dy dt along the vertical. So when it comes to the distance to the farmhouse, vertically in the y direction, is that changing at all as the car goes past? No, so it should be what special number? So this is equal to zero. Now be units of miles per hour. Somebody might come along and say, well, it should be one because one's labeled there. That's not right if you're thinking about the dynamic triangle. We're gonna have another triangle in some sense sitting here next to it that would be the static triangle because at the moment of interest, we need to know what are the lengths. Now, by the way, do we know the value of y at the moment of interest? It's what? One. Because we're exactly one mile from the farmhouse in the vertical direction. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now that we have dx dt and dy dt, here's another question. How fast is the distance between the car and the farmhouse changing? So is that going to be dx dt, dy dt, or what? It's going to be the hypotenuse, right? Right, so let's call that dz dt. And then let's take it even a step further. It says, how fast is the distance between the car and the farmhouse changing when the car is three miles past the intersection? Yeah, how far it's gone along the x-axis. So x is equal to three here. Since we're looking for dz dt, do you think it might be useful to find what missing side? The hypotenuse. Yeah, the hypotenuse on the static triangle, z. Does that make sense? So use the Pythagorean theorem to relate the sides of the right triangle to one another. I already kind of mentioned this. X, Y, and Z are all interrelated via the Pythagorean theorem. So geometrically speaking, should we start off with the Pythagorean theorem to then bring in the related rates? So typically with these related rates problems, you're gonna be taking time derivatives of the equation. That's d by dt. If we take the time derivative of this equation, using the chain rule three times, what would we get? Okay, 2x dx dt, 2y dy dt equals 2z dz dt. What can we do with all the twos, since the entire equation has twos in it? Yeah, do you see that? We can just cancel those twos. That's pretty easy. When we go to simplify an equation, I always recommend if a particular value is zero, you can knock that term out. This entire term is gonna drop out to zero. So let's simplify this. So that's not too bad. Now we're almost, we're almost home. So just divide both sides by Z. And then should we just put the numbers in? So yeah. X is three, Z is square root of 10. We need DX DT, so I think it's 60, right? That's where the 60 miles per hour comes in. Yeah, so it's 180 over the square root of 10. Now, by the way, would it be a good idea to rationalize this? Yeah, in fact, probably we should because 10 and 180, I think we're gonna get some cancellation there. So the exact value for the final answer is 18 root 10, I think it'd be miles per hour, right? Because the miles per hour was dx dt, miles was the distance, and we have to assume the time is in hours. Now, of course, one last thing, you could just get an approximate in your calculator. That's about 56.92 miles per hour. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Have a great day.